Hi everyone, I'm Nafisa, the Digital Art School producer here at Hospital Rooms. I just wanted to give you a big warm welcome and thank you for joining today's session with Giles Deacon. I really hope you enjoyed today's workshop and if you hang on until the end, I'll let you know how you can engage further with the Hospital Rooms Digital Art School community. You should have everything you need for today's workshop in front of you, so let's get started. Over to you Giles. Hello, I'm Giles Deacon and welcome to my studio in East London. It's a real beautiful studio this one, I've been in here for about two years and it's been a great place to do some um, pretty exciting work, so um, let's hope today is as well. As my second uh, Hospital Rooms Digital Art School workshop, today we're going to be exploring the world of pattern, we're going to take you through it step by step and it's all going to be about Paisley. Uh, a print I'm sure everybody is, uh, knows and loves and uh, we're going to make our own individual paisley and then I'll show you how to put it into a repeat pattern that you can then decorate your space with and potentially give to friends and family. Obviously an important and essential part to us developing our paisley pattern today is going to be our materials that we're going to be working with. I've got a very nice A2 uh, drawing pad, uh, which is a smooth cartridge. You can, of course, use whatever you have, which is the same across all of the materials. Some brilliant um, Winsor & Newton inks in some fabulous colours. A couple of rubbers, uh, some coloured pencils, a favourite of mine, the Pro Marker, watercolour brushes, water, and a, some tissues for tidying up and cleaning up. So let's start with Paisley and a little bit of history into Paisley just to give it some context. Uh, Paisley is one of my favourite patterns. It is very simple in its original shape like this. It is historically based upon, uh, some say, a pine cone, a teardrop, um, many theories as to its origins. It's about 2,000 years old and has very um, interesting Indo-European um, um, context to it. It was originally used in uh, Kashmiri um, um, scarves and woven, which became very collectible in Europe uh, a couple of hundred years ago. And because of its exceptional beauty and rarity, people um, wanted to do their own versions of it. And one of the first printers to do that was uh, in Paisley in Scotland. So that's where it gets its name from. And then, of course, we move on to Psychedelia and John Lennon, The Beatles, Pink Floyd, um, David Bowie, Paisley shirts, Paisley ties, all of the worlds of its usage and into fashion, art, and everywhere else, um, go everywhere else since. So I've prepared these Paisley templates as such, which you will all be receiving in the pack or will be able to download um, from the Hospital Rooms website. And these are really useful as a, as a kind of starting point and a guide. And I'm a real believer in when starting artworks for the first time, something like this is a really good template to trace from. If you're comfortable to begin and do your own, by all means. But if you're wanting a bit of confidence boost to get started, these are really good because they'll enable you to make them personal. I think you'll just enjoy them. You'll enjoy the process. It'll be a good, a, a good way to proceed. Now is the action stations part, the time to um, start doing some drawing, painting, whichever you're preferring. And from the... Um, the pack of paisleys, let's pick one. I think as a starter today, I'm going to go with this one here. I think this is a very good, simple one to begin with, and it gives us lots of space to fill in. Now, paisley historically, um, what makes it personal 
is the way in which that um, artists and designers can fill in with little feathers, flowers, hearts, other motifs. So if there's anything that you feel that could be interesting to you, you could draw little dogs, you could draw balloons, whatever you, you fancy. I've brought some um, very simple um, ink painting drawings that I've done um, on these little A6 pads. So we have our paisley. Let's just place this over here for now, out of the way, so you can see the shape. It's a great way to begin, I think, by looking at where it is on the paper. So if you've got a piece of A2 like this, think about the middle of the page here, and then look across and then see where you want to start. I always like to kind of start on the, on the far right arch and then really don't worry about um, your line. Try to keep your pencil on the paper in one fell swoop. It's a good exercise to do this and you, you may not get it right the first time um, but it's worth a try and there is no right or wrong within this. It's all about the experimentation and the act of drawing and mark making. And then this will get a really hopefully a good shape. Mine's looking a bit like a whale there. But there we go. So that's a good start, I think. So don't worry if your shape isn't quite as you want it. It's the main aim is to get this shape down. From there, we can then work with some inks over it. So a next step would be to get something like this Winsor & Newton black ink, which I use all the time. It's a really beautiful ink. I would recommend just wetting your brush and then just dip your brush into the ink and then just have a little trial and play and work and see how the ink is, is coming on. So again, don't be precious about it. The whole point of this is the activity of, 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 of painting and drawing and doing. So start in the same place and then maybe push down a bit, get a bit deeper. And then if lines move and wobble around, they're all good. They all give a bit of personality. I like it when lines go from thin to fat. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that at all. We don't really want perfection in this at all. Um, it's getting a nice bit of lineage all the way around there, following that pencil line, coming around the corner. I've gone off piste a bit there, but it's all good. And if you are on a smaller piece of paper, A4 or other, that's all fine also. There we go. A nice way to feel about looking at that now is wondering what you'd like to do with it. You can put other patterns inside, and I think that's a really nice way to, um, to develop your paisley. So seeing on here these, these sort of miniature teardrops inside, start thinking about where you'd like to put those. Let's start again over by this side, coming round, following through, and then going down to like a teardrop. A bit of water needed there. back round, going to here, there we go, another teardrop, smaller one inside. So when we've got the outline of the single paisley piece with its miniature teardrops inside, uh, I think a good thing to do is to uh, think about how you'd like to decorate the inside of it. And this is, the, again, the sort of personalisation of it. So if there's little flowers or motifs of patterns, you've got areas to fill, which is kind of interesting, I think. And it's nice to have these areas to, um, to keep within and, um, and, uh, and make the pattern yours. So using some of these very abstract flower motifs, I'm going to start filling these in, in here. So thinking about little leaves, and you can develop it as you go along. And there's something about the kind of rhythm of doing these I think is really satisfying. And you kind of make these sort of abstract flower patterns. And Paisley is abstract. 
It's, it's an interesting combination of, of elements that are inspired by the natural world and then also very abstract. So we're filling in all of the areas. Um, got some large um, brush strokes here, getting these elements of leaves and then the kind of more miniature flower areas in there. And I think now is quite a nice time to do some very sort of small detailed um, um, repeats. So I'm going to use a smaller brush again, still with the ink, and do some things, some, some elements that are very, very simple in the repeat. And these don't all have to be the same height or, but they kind of like, these are like little feathers, little teeth. And they give that sense of repetition that I think Paisley is quite well known for. Clear the decks and spin around if you need. And of course, the thing with um, making a design like this and this sort of pattern is that you can absolutely um, freestyle and do whatever you want with it. So if you're feeling that you want to do something you know, kind of more abstract or bigger shapes, you, you know, don't follow this exactly. This is just a kind of a template to start. And I think that's what, what will help make all of these look so special and, um, and well worked out at the end. Then I'm going to, we've got all of this line on the inside. So rather than repeat the same, I think a new motif in there would be really, really nice way to, to start. So I'm going to do some very kind of soft, um, repeat lines and swirls, almost like a kind of a little like necklace chain. So going underneath and then starting on the top. And whatever your painting and drawing style is, I think that's the, the really kind of interesting thing that will come through with, the, with doing an artwork like this, is that some people like to work really, really fine and will maybe just do one only in pencil. And some people will do them in much broader, um, larger brush strokes. All those other ways of working with different materials, all, you know, it's, all, it's all super. And I think that's what makes the exercise of, of painting and drawing such a rewarding one, is to see everybody else's different viewpoint and, and perspectives and, and ways of drawing. So I, I've got the, uh, the, the the kind of general outline of this paisley up to up to this stage of them uh, as now and I, I want to sort of start adding in uh, some new elements into this area i think i've kind of got enough of the um of, of the ink work in there so i'm going to use one of the pro markers and i think keeping it all quite dark tonally at the moment works really well so i'm going to um um use brown this beautiful brown here and um and just give it a little test see what's working on, on here, which looks lovely. Look at that. So you're getting an, a, a really nice new bit of detail on here, which looks lovely. So let's start working in some little elements into here. And these can, again, can be quite nice little abstract patterns. Um, the, the, they can be little moments, swirls, ticks, crosses, um, whatever you're feeling. And if you want to, um, do some, some, make yourself almost like a little drawing vocabulary. You could do, uh, you know, a little, a little sheet of, of things that you like, if you want a cross, if you want a, a cloud, if you want a circle with a, another X through it, or, a, or a, some lips, or what, whatever it is you want to do, you can, you, can, you can play away with those and make these elements that bring your own um, pattern vocabulary together. And that's the nice thing about doing a drawing like this is that I think, you know, different um, abilities and experiences of drawing can, can get something quite rewarding out of it. When you do come to add colour, a sort of general rule of thumb works that either keep it within the colourway that is, is sort of not, you know, kind of a monotone of sorts. So say if you're going to do it in blue, do it all in blue. Or you use as many colours as possible and make it super vibrant and super psychedelic. And, and within the materials that you've got, I think it's really interesting to play with all of the different materials. And you can see how in a relatively short period of time, just using this marker pen in, in a very simple abstract way really is quite effective. And it brings, uh, um, 
you know, a, a, it starts pulling the pattern together, which I think is really, really pretty. There we go, all around there. So I think a new colour. We're into these marker pens. The Pro Markers are really super to work with. Adding something quite complimentary in there. I think maybe a green. So I think let's, within this pattern, which is starting to look quite complex, but nice, I think. So let's do something simple like a, a circle. So Paisley, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's been you know, kind of very popular within um, popular culture at various stages. And particularly with the music world, you know, we have Prince with Paisley Park, David Bowie, a big fan of Paisley, um, John Lennon and his, um, his Paisley Rolls Royce. So let's go with some good colour, I think. And um, I rather like the look of this rather nice purple is quite good. Yeah, that's a good vibrant colour. Look at that lovely, lovely colour there. Really super. So, to start building it up a bit and, um, and making it a bit solid, I think it'd be maybe nice to put into some of these sort of leaf areas. We can start filling in here, bringing some purple in. Try a few in different areas to begin with. You don't need to do all of them um, because I think that helps you free up some space for future colours, but also to give it a little bit of an overview as you're working along and you'll see how it's um, forming and, and, and which colours are complementing what and, and, and what you're liking about it also. I think that's the whole point of these workshops is to kind of experiment and to, um, and to play and have, some, um, have some, some working outs of what, of what you're liking and not liking within your, your practice. I think we could maybe add more colour here. I'm feeling the colour world today. I think this is um, the... the kind of way in which that this is working out now is, is really starting to, um, you're getting the sense of the paisley very nicely here, I think. All the kind of small um, elements are really sort of helping and then these sort of larger, more, more abstract flowers are, are, are really giving it a bit of a sense of personality, which is really, which I'm liking. I think we're kind of motoring along quite nicely here. Um, I think we've got room for probably like one more colour on this one. And then I think it's often nice to um, um, work to a point. Don't overdo things, you know, get to a point where you're kind of thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm quite liking the feel of this. And then you can have a little um, mini break from it and, um, and come back to it at a later stage. Um, so I'm going to have a look. This cobalt is pretty spectacular. Purple and blue go super well together. And the, a really, really interesting um, exercise with this, I think, is, is for people to be able to explore colour and really play with colour, because often people are a bit afraid of using colour within artworks and drawings sometimes. But it's, it, these are, this is a really good way of, um, of, of experimenting, which is, um, which is quite rewarding, I think. So as a, as a little bit of an overview of looking at where this, uh, this Paisley is, is, is heading along to, um, I think I'm, I'm liking how all this is forming. It's got, this has got a kind of a nice life to it, a, a nice energy and feel. But this section in here, I think, is looking a little um, um, open. I'm going to do another bold um, stroke in black again this time and just try it out on the paper there and all good and then so maybe start where should we start let's start up in this sort of corner here and then let's go and this is a nice place to try some thicker line and then thinner line and really just doesn't matter if it wobbles around a bit it's all part of the fun of the fair super fine going through here into some deeper worlds and you can see how that's helped bring it together already um, and you don't have to it doesn't have to start in the same place it can stop and jump around there we go like those together there we go that helps bring it all in together and I think what would be nice also this time would be to maybe do um, some little elements 
of spaces in here. So where we've got these ones that are a little bit open there, you can just do something like that, a little motif like that, that just helps fill these spaces that don't necessarily have to make any sense. They can just literally be marks and lines. And those are the things that really help tie these, these pieces together. Maybe in some of the more open areas here as well, we can start doing some little, little spots. Help fill in these. These could be little abstract leaves, whispers and moments, all sorts of little moves. And this is really helping pull the paisley together. Um, now you're seeing these elements all, all interact with each other. For those of you wanting to do a more kind of decorative repeat pattern that could be put across, you know, kind of larger spaces, um, I think a good way to think about it is, is that you could do another version where you uh, do it in black and white, maybe a smaller scale, and then have that photocopied, and then you can um, colour in with all of the, 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 the materials that you want, either through um, you know, the coloured pencils or, the, or something like the Pro Markers. And, and that's a nice way to get um, different coloured, same patterns, and um, and I think they they make nice nice um, 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 cards and things for gifts for people as well. That's starting to look really nice and full within the world of a paisley. So um, I don't think we're getting too far off here. I, I, if I was to start doing more, I would probably add a bit more colour, um, um, which we could possibly do. Maybe a bit more of the purple again. Actually, let's let's keep it tethered with some purple. And I think these teeth all the way around would be, would be quite nice to start putting some purple in here. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing everybody's work as well, which uh, I know is going to be able to be uploaded um, into um, a shared online gallery, which I think will be a, a tremendously um, exciting place to see your work. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what what absolutely wonderful um, and personal um, artworks have been developed by everybody. Um, it's going to be a real exciting thing. And it's all about the painting and drawing community, I think, all of this. It's to see everybody's work. And, uh, and I know that when it's all put up on the gallery, it'll look so varied and fabulous and wonderful and vibrant and exciting. When you see people's work all put up together, it's really inspiring, um, and I think it's, a, it's inspiring and rewarding for, for everybody. So um, really looking forward to that. And I think it's starting to come together now. So you can see how, from that very, very simple start, using that um, predetermined simple teardrop shape, something so, um, so complex, in essence, can, can be made. Um, in a relatively short period of time. Um, and um, it's nice having templates like this because you can, you can have a work away. If you've just got a, a, you know, a small piece of A4 paper, you could do one on there as well. I find it quite meditative and, you know, and it's nice time just to get absorbed into the, all of the intricacies of the drawing and the, and the, the, the process of drawing, which is um, a really, I find, a very nourishing and um, fulfilling thing to do. It's not about being perfect doing these paintings and drawings. You know, you're kind of um, filling in colour, but you can do it quite quickly as well, it's, you know, if, if that's how you like to work. So within this Paisley, which we're not far off finishing, there's been a few worlds to work on. We've done the initial outline, and then we've worked some bigger sort of naturalistic elements of the leaves and the, and the, and the sort of flowers um, in the center. Um, more decorative elements of the little kind of pyramids, and then the swirls and squiggles and circles, again, which you can make up your own versions of what you'd like them to be. 
and then some solid line to help tie it all together and then the colour which we've started about two thirds of the way through to add the colour and you could keep on doing this for quite some time to make it as complex or as um, a minimal if you're wanting to do a minimal paisley. And these inks have been wonderful. The, the quality of these, uh, the, the colour on these inks is so nice. Final few teeth, bump, bump, there we go. Nearly done. Nearly done. So I think we could leave that there. Put your initial on if you want. There we go. And I think we are nearly there with today's decorative paisley to decorate your space with. I look forward to seeing them all. And thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to see the artwork that you created today, so make sure to upload to our Digital Art School Gallery that's available on our website. We also invite you to please complete the survey that's available because your voice matters to us and it's crucial in helping us to shape the future of the Digital Art School, which in turn will help others find joy and healing through arts. You can find the links to both the Digital Art School Gallery and the survey in the description below. Thanks again and we really hope to see you for the next one.